After remaining at historically low levels for all of 2017, volatility has come back this year. It's especially high in Indian equities where every small climb has triggered another deeper correction. At this stage, uh, a case has been made for investing in debt-based instruments. And who better to talk about it than Lakshmi Ayer, CIO Debt and uh, Head of Products at Kotak Mutual Fund. Lakshmi, thank you so much indeed for joining us on Bloomberg Mint. Uh, let me begin by asking you about what's going on globally. Clearly, we, we just heard a, an interview with the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, talking about the tariff that's, that's impending this week, as early as this week. Is that working on the mind of the market? So bond markets, uh, to my mind, are worried more about the domestic factors, mm. uh, which is more overwhelming right now, and lesser to do with the global factors. Right. So uh, basically, the uh, fact that there is a lot of impending supply, mm. which will start uh, from April of 2018, which is a month from today, mm. and uh, there is no commensurate or at least perceived commensurate demand to really absorb that supply. I think that is plaguing the minds of the bond market trader right now mm. and uh, to some extent um, uh, the global factors are just kind of acting as a fringe uh, you know I would say events or impactfulness mm. uh, but it's more of the core domestic uh, issues that we are dealing with right now. Okay. What is your assessment of liquidity at this point in time? I understand that the RBI has also announced some uh, interim liquidity injections right. through the repo auctions. Uh, right. Has that made a difference? So uh, it has made a very big difference, especially at the shorter end of the yield curve. Market was clearly showing signs of being choked of liquidity. Mm. So we uh, actually morphed from a liquidity surplus stage to we were tending to a liquidity deficit zone. And with this, uh, you know, uh, introduction of a slightly wrong term repo window to the tune of about a lakh crore mm. um, has uh, ensured that liquidity remains, uh, I won't say surplus, but comfortable in the system. Two good developments that we heard from Delhi. One is that the government expects a $1.5 billion interim dividend from the Reserve Bank of India. And we also heard that they're pushing for a Fitch upgrade. Right. Uh, are these things uh, material? They can act as small catalysts, mm. but as I said, uh, the hygiene checks are absent right now. Mm. So the mood of the market is not upbeat at the current juncture. Uh, till some time back, I would say that they were actually mirroring, uh, uh, it was a mirror image of equity market uh, in terms of sentiments, mm. but now equity also sentiments are a little bit dampened. But any which ways, uh, that and as I mentioned to you, uh, the uh, future course of inflation and supply. So I think uh, the small catalysts can act as, uh, I would say, small fillers uh, to give you some moments of joy but uh, nothing on a slightly more durable basis mm. uh, because markets are also of the view that you know these things can probably give a short term fillip but nothing to really give you a sustained recovery in the bond deals at the current juncture. Okay, When we spoke to with, um, people in the market last week there was clearly uh, the overwhelming theme was lack of demand by with the lack of participation by the state-run banks. Correct. Uh, is that still continuing? Absolutely. So even yesterday in a nice uh, rally day, I would say, after a long time, uh, we actually saw public sector banks being uh, net sellers. Mm. And uh, so, you know, if oxygen is to life, I would say PSU banks are to the <laughs> bond markets. Uh, they clearly don't seem to be there at this point in time. Okay. And that is obviously a worrying, worrying as I said, two demand levers. Mm. One is FPI limits are full. Mm. So they're on auction mode. And uh, public sector banks, so they are kind of two sides of the same demand curve. Okay. Uh, one section of the market also believes that the yield, 10 year yield is going to go as high as 8%, particularly mid-April uh, when the borrowing kicks in. Uh, would you agree with to that view? See, numbers can go anywhere. Today, the market liquidity is uh, so deplorable. You mm. know, till yesterday, the bond markets were trading just about 10 to 12,000 crores in the entire day, mm. and which is, you know, one tenth or one fifteenth of the equity market volumes. Mm. In very good days, euphoric moments, we had about a lakh crore of uh, bonds being traded, government security. So today, if uh, just two of us are assuming the entire market, if you decide where the yields have to be and you just short it, for example, you want the yields higher, there they are. Mm. And if I decide I'm going to start buying a few uh, hundred crores, I can can actually put the price higher. So what's happening is that the lack of depth in the market, any of these numbers are not impossible. I would say it will take a while because there has to be value buying that has to creep in, right, ultimately. Correct. So um, yields at these levels are looking a uh, roaring, screeching, screaming buy. Mm. Uh, but um, market participants like us, for example, mutual funds are staying off because we don't know if I buy today, for example, and as you rightly observed, April, who will I sell to? Correct. We don't know. Mm. So because those answers 
answers are not very certain, mm. I think it's better to stay off the market. Try to ride those small moments or small pleasures. Mm. So these are like one of those cheat day moments, you know, in a diet regime. So you get into those cheat days, so you can indulge in sweets for a short while. Sure. <laughs> um, two data points. Uh, we, we saw a headline GDP print of 7.2 for October, December that come in. Um, and most believe the, the CPA number is headed down. Right. Uh, how do you think the Reserve Bank is looking at it from a rate standpoint? So if you look at inflation guidance for FY19, mm. first half is higher, second half is lower. Yep. So RBI is going to look through even if inflation spikes a little bit right now. Uh, second is on the GDP front. Uh, yes, we have seen Q3 at 7.2. Is it going to be sustainable? I think that is what RBI will uh, look out for. So on balance, if you put these two macro things into perspective, mm. I think uh, we still believe that RBI would be in for an extended pause. I think it's too soon uh, to cry out uh, a rate hike uh, signal. Uh, it is better to incrementally watch the data points, durability of inflation, mm. and more importantly, will this growth really sustain? Mm. Given that public sector banks are not really lending euphorically on the credit side, mm. so I think you have to weigh those pros and cons before you call it a day and say that, okay, now we're going to hike rates. So I think it's going to be an extended pause from RBI. Okay. For a mutual fund uh, investor who's been watching this, he's had a fairly decent 2017. Yeah. Uh, most of them sat on gains. Uh, we've seen 2018 begin with extreme amount of volatility in the equity markets. Right. What would be, what are you telling investors? Uh, are, are you telling investors to switch to debt? Guys who are in debt, what do they do? So we're telling investors that equity is like Red Bull and mm. debt is like proteins or uh, you know <laughs> vitamins on your portfolio. You need to have both of them. Uh -huh. It's very important. If you have been excessively consuming Red Bull, your mm. portfolio is running or galloping. Mm. Uh, it has obviously slowed down a little bit. Sure. Uh, you can't uh, juxtapose one on top of the other. Mm. You can't supplement. You know you can't say that okay this is going to be substituted. There is a complementing strategy. Mm. So what we are telling investors right now is that uh, yields are at elevated levels mm. and uh, bond uh, offer. You know, fixed income gives you uh, all seasons kind of offering in, in terms of seasons. Here means interest rate cycles. So you can pick and choose the kind of strategies that you like. Sure. Um, so it's good to bring a stable bias to your portfolio mm -hmm. and fixed income will do just that for you. So you can invest in fixed maturity plans. Mm -hmm. You can invest in corporate bond based strategies because mm -hmm. the yields are high. So you can lock into returns right now, enjoy the carry, enjoy the stability. But don't make the mistake of redeeming from equities and going into fixed income or removing from do that only if your asset allocation has seen a shift sure but are you seeing investors rejigging their portfolios? Is, yeah. are, are those questions are being asked? Absolutely. So I am not surprised by that question because I keep getting queries from clients, investors, potential investors. Mm. Yeah, uh, equity bechke, fixed income mein But I, I, as I said, that is a very wrong thought process. Mm. Um, I suggest to them only if uh, they were 70-30 allocated mm. and because of greed. Obviously when you mean 70-30, 70, 70, 70 equity, equity 30, right? and 30 fixed income for example. Right. And for some reason 70 has become 73 because of market moments. Mm. And you let the greed factor pull on. Mm. You did not remove that three bucks. So now is the time to do that because you have to stick to this dharma of asset allocation. And if you're not going to, you know, if you kind of deviate, mm. so we all know now what happened when Sita breached the Lakshman Rekha. <laughs> there was Ramayan. So I don't want a Ramayan kind of a situation in your portfolio. So I think it's very important mm. that you stick to and adhere to that and keep reviewing your portfolio on a periodic basis. Okay. I think that's very relevant. Interesting. That I have one final question. We're talking today on Women's Day. Uh, somebody pointed out a survey about the, the fewer women who are present in the fund management business. Right. Uh, what's it been like? Is, is there a gla glass ceiling that you deal with? I think it's flesh ceiling, you know, because the ceiling is in your mind. Mm. Because if you keep telling yourself that you are going to achieve it, it's not impossible. And trust me, I have done it. Mm. It's not a rocket science. Mm. So fundamentally, if you are convinced, see, firstly, you need to have that innate desire mm. and that passion that, okay, you know, this is what I want to do. Once you have that, you are equipped with these two astras, then there is nothing that is going to stop you from achieving your goal. It's more of intimidation and more of hearsay. Here, yahan pe na earthquake hai. So if mm. there is an earthquake here, I'm not going to go, but there's nothing there. Mm. That place is completely dry it's absolutely barren so if you are going to perceive so I think um, for all the women out there my uh, suggestion I'm not going to advise or opine but my suggestion is that uh, there is no glass ceiling anywhere it's just a flesh ceiling it's all in your brains so if you are going to conceptualize that this is what I want to be and this is what I'm going to do I don't think that anybody in this world including you can stop you from achieving it more power to you many yeah. thanks thank you, thank you so much thank you so much yeah. Lakshmi